Well, folks, it is. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. As the sign says, so look at this. Graham's actually tied up in a luxury pontoon marina. It is handy. I mean, what is it? Am I made of money or what? So let's get cracking. Quite early in the morning, it looks like being a crackerjack day out here. And this place is going to be buzzing with boaters very shortly. Look at these things, boys. <laughs> I, haven't, I don't think I've used these since I bought them 10 years ago. I don't even know if I use the right knot for them. The boat is a bomb sight, it can't be helped, it's what it is. I've been shark fishing yesterday, so what do you expect? It's a mess. All good fishing boats are a mess. Especially this one. I don't feel I hit the persona of such a luxury establishment. But nevertheless, my folding money is exactly the same as the others. Very nice it is too. Oh me, what a day it looks like being. I'm on, on, there's a knock at the door. But don't freeze in your tracks. It's the chance you've been waiting for. It's the light coming through the crack When light shows an open door Come on, step A chance at the purest goal Come on, come on When light shows an open road You know you should arrive Forget Well, I do love a bit of serene music like that. It just gets you into the sort of feel of things. Except when I get in the open ocean, you guys know, it's gonna be hammer time. I'll tell you what boys, I'm gonna have got some I've got some chum here, I'm gonna put some chum out because if I've got an ebb tide running that way, there's every chance it might be a shark I could suck in from outside there. And I've seen just while I stopped drifting, sorting the anchor out, you might see in one, two, three, loads and loads of these small jellyfish about this size. I might be able to get them on the other water camera if they come past the anchor. Gonna be using it's rough ground, I'm gonna be using a, an expendable grapnel anchor. It's tripped here with cable ties. It's got 10 mil polyprop onto a wonderful fully patented machine. An old garden hose reel cut down. The reason it is cut down is so that it goes up inside there out of the way. So I'm gonna drop this down. Hopefully I've got enough on there. And if we can get the anchor to hold, I'm hoping the tide's not too strong. There is a pot line, I imagine, from that flag there across to that flag there. I don't want to be in there. There's a very slight rip over there. So I'm going to poke around a little bit and just see if I can find whether I'm going to go this side or that side. I'm sort of wanting to fish this side for the sharks on the outside, but I guess it doesn't make much difference, really. 
I mean, very close to shore for shark. Unbelievably close. A lot of birds working over there. That's going to suck me that way as well. Let's go! All right. Can only try. That's all we can do, people. Hopefully there's enough string here to reach the bottom. It's not looking good at the moment. Oops is the word. This is the start of a boy going the other way. This other line I think I've worked out is there, and a boy and a boy are there. Loads of dolphins over there actually. Um, I envisage my chum and bait smell will be going that way. It's going in here. But I'm going to give it a little while, just going to give it a little while because the tide inside is always a, a hell of a lot different than outside. It could be an hour or so. It's cranking along. But where's it going? It's going straight into there. And the other thing that got me thinking was they saw a lot of activity, I think it was birds, sardines, pilchards, whatever, inside, along what I call the inside here. Well then, is that something to do with the current, pushing all the food in there? Should I be anchored in there? There is indeed a boat anchored in there. Should I, two boats. Should I be going right inside? It does make me wonder, because I can't work it out. How is the tide coming this way? Should we go in that way? Somebody tell me. Strange creatures, these tides. But I've got three conga rods down. I'm going to have some brekkie and I might re-anchor, just give it half an hour. If I get bites, I'll stay here. Pointless putting a shark line out because there you can see the boy. Straight round that, job over. And besides, it's going so close to shore there, I mean eventually it's got to kick that way. That's why I'd be interested to find that angle where it kicks that way. Breakfast first. I've got some whiting hung over the side there. Just carcass, what we call carcass chumming. Just a regular way carcass chum in. And I've got some leftover stuff there. I've got some fresh here. I'm just holding farm, keeping my powder dry at the moment. This is cornflakes, raisins, and two day old milk. When the blue pack, the chiller, has gone warm. Mmm. Got quite a pungent smell to it. Mind you, the smell in this boat with all the chum and everything all over the floor, it, um, it probably doesn't smell at all. There's something biting, something, look, 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 I think that's a, I'm going to put that down as a small eel. I'll, I'll settle for anything. Check drag, Graham, check drag. This is the most rubbish reel I've got in my whole arsenal, this one. Absolute piece of rubbish, look, even the ratchet fell off, I put a piece of paper to stop the salt water going in there. Drag keeps on doing itself on the preset. But it still turns and it's still... I'm going to ease up here. There's a fish on it. Fish. Oh, I've got to get him off the bottom. Got to get him off the bottom. It's a small one. Whatever it is, it's small. Listen, I'm going to settle for a fish, whatever this is. Let's break the duck, boys. My mackerel, I didn't have any chance of chilling them. Being the summer, they've started going soft. Can I just see it? I just want to see it. I think it might be a ling or something. A ling or a bullet. I don't think it's a conger. It's even worse. It's a dogfish and a tangle with my other braid. Okay, okay, it is a start. Well, just an update, guys. I was out there, I've had to move inshore because the tide is cranking along on the ebb like. I can't tell you, it's like the Bristol Channel on steroids. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I couldn't fish a first muck. I fished a second muck, I couldn't hold bottom. I've had to come way in here. There's so much weed out there. There's weed in here, but being reduced depth. And look how close to shore I am. Very, very close to shore. Just trying to get a bait on the bottom to stay on the bottom. I'm getting tiny taps on middle rod here. I haven't put any shark lines out because I feel there's no sharks in this close. I might have to dive out for a quick drift out there later in the afternoon. It depends. It is really a voyage of catching anything. But listen, don't say I'm not one to save money. Well, Wayne saved these for me. Some nice stainless, a bolt and a load of nuts and washers there. 
all in stainless, 100 pound mono, and there's my bait, half of yesterday's mackerel. So I'm just dropping, well that is me, isn't it? Nuts. I must be, if we keep moving and moving, I should have packed up. Loads of people outside, they've gone out, loads of the yachts have gone out. There's a bit of breeze coming tomorrow, I'll probably be on the way home either tonight or tomorrow. Just a short, uh, supposed to be a little killer trip on the conga and it's not happening. Just listen guys, fishing is fishing, it doesn't always go according to plan. I've got, I've got the anchor stuck, oh two bits of good news guys. No joy, got the anchor stuck, three, four, five, six pulls at it to get it out. And then there's some nice button on here that I pressed, which I have done before. Night vision or something, it sends the screen black. The trouble is when you switch it on, it's so black you can't see how to reset it. So I've now got no GPS or sounder, so I'm just going by the cliffs here, figuring if there's rocks there, they should tumble down into here. So there's a beach there, there's a beach there. I wouldn't want to be anchored in front of that beach, or that beach I feel be broken if not fine ground. Here is a lot more granite, it might be a bit harder, there might be some rock left down there. That's the theory at the moment. Has it stood me in good stead? No it hasn't. Ted's asleep in the cabin, can you blame him? So I might attack the sounder in a moment, I don't know and see if I can get it back on so I, well there's no fog or anything like that but I'd be really stuffed if it was, if it was foggy. I have to go back with dead reckoning and things like that, nasty things like that. But what a gorgeous day, guys. I mean, I shouldn't be moaning, should I? But I don't understand it. I've got five big conger baits down there. Fresh, fresh mackerel, not caught today. I think I might pull that. That's the lightest rod I got. I wasn't geared up for small fish. I'm just going to maybe fire some small hooks down and see if there's anything down there. Because sometimes I get something like cuckoo wrasse here, which are really colourful fish. Who knows? It's an absolutely fabulous day. Oh, yeah. These guys yeah, are... Yeah, very good. And I had to turn around, sadly. I got to get them in for getting a float and a new key, so... But we had... Uh, we see tuna busting up in here off the ships there. That's so just out there. There's a lot of dolphin, poor boys, loads of birds, so they're happy. How are you doing? You getting a few fish? No, we haven't seen a shark yet. Tuna everywhere, but no shark yet. No sharks. Just, they're getting that hot, they're jumping in for a swim at the moment. I do, I do. I'm surprised you're not getting any sharks. So I don't know. I got 20 degrees Celsius in here uh, off the Cobrax. So there's plenty of warm water. And you'd think, you know, a good old chum chum. Have you got a reasonable drift on? Yeah, we're doing more than half knots here. No, the chum is great. They, they've just been here for a swim. They said it's actually warmer here than what it is on the beach. I do, and yeah. No, good. What a cracking day, though, eh, Billy? First thing this morning, I don't suppose there was a ripple on it, was there? Oh, it's lovely. It's just life everywhere. Because the last time I shark fished out of here, I struggled. This guy is a local by his accent. He hasn't caught one. You know, I mean, something peculiar is going on with the shark. Just not the numbers there. Something peculiar is going on out here with the. Uh, congas or lack of. Now that guy who saw the bluefin tuna busting just behind these boats you might might be able to see him in the distance over the back of there I'm going to call that two and a half miles away nothing really as the crow flies as the seagull flies. Well other than the dogfish I haven't totally blanked boys here is an untouched bait except for this starfish so you can see that starfish there is very very spiky unbelievably spiky I'm going to call it a spiky starfish and they are I think a bit of a pest to the reef these things I think they destroy the reef and corals and things like that I think when they have the big ones I'm going to pick him up like that he's very spiny but there you go save the blank tag and release must be good well, you were gathered by the colour of the water, guys. I've made my fifth move of a disastrous fish-wise day. A beautiful day. Weather-wise, boat-wise, sun-wise, wind-wise, no fish. You heard the guy on the radio said he had no sharks. Somebody did catch a 350-pound bluefin tuna today. I heard him talking on the radio. He's about 12 miles out, I think. Big, big short shoals of those way offshore. I've come out more into the bay. 
I'm going to have one last throw of the dice. There's my slick. Here's the last bit of chum I've got going out. I can't take it. Well, I could take it home, but it's going to stink the car out. I could put it in the boat, I suppose, and freeze it again. But I figure I'm here. I've got weather like this. In fact, they came over the radio talking just now. They said it's like they'd never known so many, so few blue sharks. And I'm wondering, are all these bluefin tuna coming in here eating all the mackerel to the detriment of the blue shark? Is that why the blues aren't coming in? Because they can't follow the shoals in because the tunas are much, much faster feeders. Just a theory. I'm going to throw it out there that with the influx of the bluefin tunas that come almost coinciding very, very closely with the blue sharks, I wonder if it's to the detriment of the blue sharks. The last two years have not been good for the numbers, generally, as a general rule. But you never know. I'm stupid enough to still be trying. Ever full of hope. I expect a blank today, boys. If I do, I'll have to get you out fishing somewhere else. Ted's had it. Ted is gone. Ted, he's down there. Look, he won't even speak. He just will not speak to me at all. He's disgusting. He said he told me he's wasted a whole teddy bear day today. He could have been at home doing teddy bear jobs. Well, there you go. I'll tell you what else I did, people. I did a bit of power chumming and drove the chum through the water, dragging it for about a good half a mile, trying to, trying to start myself a bit of a drift here, trying to buy myself some time. I also had the shirt off and I'm getting pretty sunburnt. So quiet out here. So it's really down to the last knockings now, people. Trying to salvage, I mean, the dogfish saved the blank, but dogfish, come on. I'm sending down a lump of lead, four chunks of very, very soft mackerel. I could virtually pour on the hook and just see if I can't just salvage a whiting or two out of this. I've got my three shark lines out there. Hey ho, if summer comes great, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Just heard on the radio, it's a really bad year, so what can, what can we say? It's, uh, it's one of those things. I'm trying, I'm in it, you've got to be in it to win it. A mako shark could swim up there at any time, and that's why I go sea fishing. You don't know what. There is no guarantee. They're not stocked in a lake or anything like that. Let's get this on the bottom, and we'll see if any customers are down deep. We're in about 210 feet of water, 220 feet of water. Probably get to the bottom by about next Thursday. I just dropped that bait down. Put the mic on. I just uh, dropped. <laughs> I've dropped the bait down. Yes, hopefully it's going to save the blank. I'm going to cut some of these uh, conga baits up and start chumming with those as well because I haven't got much chum at all, but I have got, if I turn this around here, you've got a bite on there, boys. I'm just going to unclip the mic and see if he's still there. Ha! Thank, thank goodness there's a fish. Oh. I'm going to have to Google this one to see what a fish looks like. There's a fish. It looks like he's tangled up. I don't care. Oh, look at this. This is how luck turns around when you're fishing. I don't even think he's hooked. He's lassoed himself. I thought I was having a bad day. Oh, it's definitely not his day. He hasn't even got a hook in his mouth. He's got lassoed. I think we ought to let him, let him go after that. Well, well, well. How luck turns around. You would be pleased to catch that off the beach, wouldn't you? Now, shore fishing in the winter, why can't they all be this size? I don't understand it. Let's get him back. He's gone. Sea fish, they're just more active. They need more oxygen, I guess. I don't know. They just go at a different rate to freshwater fish. So you zoom them in. Standard practice around the world, especially stuff like tuna, which do burn a lot of oxygen. You've got to zoom them in, it blasts the water over their gills and they swim away. They also, I believe, gives them a chance to depressurize just going down a foot or so. If you flop them in, you know, mm, back you go, Mr. Wissy Fishy. If you do all that, it's upside down, off it goes. Who comes along? That's right, Mr. Blackback going to nail it straight down his tummy. So if you want to put the fish back, look, if you want to keep it, eat it, it's sizable, eat it. No problems. You want to put it back? I'm just saying my way of doing it, 
and loads of professionals all over the world. I'm not a professional, I just do it. Zoom them in, chances are that fish is going to go down. This whole fishing game is funny. It's like the number 49 bus that they wait for. You wait for ages and then two come along at the same time. Oh, there they go. Couple of nice white in. They're saving the day all the time for me. And this one's hooked in the ear. Pardon? Pardon? Look out for that hook. Pardon? Ugh. They all count. Wow, boys, this one's a chunk. This one is. What? <laughs> this is whiting of the year. Oh my god. This has made the trip worthwhile, people. Look at the size of this whiting. Let me get him off the hook for you. This is the size of a small cod. Whack a do. <laughs> Just check this one out, people. Now that's what you call a good West Country whiting. That is a good eater. And I'm going to get him straight back. If I don't zoom him back, he ain't going to make it. And you can check out the teeth on him. <laughs> I've just got spiked by him. That is a beauty. Let's get him back straight away. Last of it, boys. It's a rotten stuff there, but it's good. The last of it's going in. I've got about 30 minutes I'm going to give it. Just going to shoot those in there loose. A man can never have enough plastic containers. Look at that lovely stuff going away there. All that work to get it and then you put it in the water. We must be mad. Well boys, the sun's going down. Lowering in the sky, I think they say. It's patently obvious I can catch as many whiting as I can ever put down, but I've dumped the last of my mackerel. I'm going to get rid of this chum. It's 10 past six. I've got a mug about 10 miles, not quite 10 miles, probably eight miles back. Um, I'm still getting whiting bites over there. That's my last drop, that one. Three baited feathers. Don't neglect baited feathers, they're very effective in deep water. In fact, anywhere at all, to be honest, even abroad, I've, I catch snappers and stuff like that on them. Bream, snappers. It looks like no sharks. I heard nothing on the radio from the other shark guy, so it's the way it is. But listen, don't go away. I'm going to attack some. I've got to catch something. I'm going to go somewhere else. It could be a river, a stream, the sea, the beach. I don't, beach. I don't know where I'm going to go. Determined to catch something. It's bye from me. And it's bye from me. Because I'm at a shock of a day, all I've done is sleep and get bored. If this is fishing, I don't want any of it. Such an ungrateful chap, isn't he, really? See you next time. Well, that was a pretty interesting fishing trip. And listen, you're always learning about fishing. Tips, techniques, they all count. They all get you on that road to... I want to call it success, but fishing's what it is. It's not like playing around a golf, is it? With golf, you know the hole is actually down there. With fishing, you don't know where the fish are. Anyway, one for the sea guys now. Little tip here. It's not really a tip, it's just standard procedure, but I thought I'd show people. I'm going to have to put the mat up here because what I'm going to show you is pretty huge. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Now then, let's get the dark table for you to show you. People go sea fishing a lot. They go beach fishing, they go boat fishing. In charter boats, they don't have to worry, just go on the boat, the skipper does it all for you, but there are people out there with their own boats, and they know, yes, that's right guys, it's a minefield. A bit like trying to find the end of this piece of chain. Now then, if you anchor in a boat, this is for a small boat fisherman, not the QE2. Which 
chain. You need a lengthy chain. You need a good lengthy chain longer than a lengthy boat. Because what happens when you drop the anchor down, it goes down to the bottom, the rope goes up here. Well, if you have it tight, two things happen, right? It's just sitting like this, isn't it? Upright. What you want is for these flukes to be turned over that way and to, to put it into the mud, ground, or whatever, to dig in like that, like a scoop. This one's called a Bruce anchor. Weight wise, five kilos, this one. And that's what I use a high sea drift in my boat, which is 17 feet long. So if you've got a boat from, I'm gonna say 12 feet average for a bit of inshore fishing to 20 feet, I think that would be constitute 18, 20 feet, mine's 17. They call them day boats, they go out for the day, obviously. I go out for the night sometimes in the summer, but you want to make sure your anchor holds. There's nothing worse than an anchor that's dragging. You do not fish properly, you get in a mess. So you can look up for the size of your boat, what size anchor you probably need. Get yourself a length of chain, a good length of chain, longer than the length of your boat. At the other end, you can put, say, on here, a shackle, or, or your rope, you can put a shackle and snap it to here so that you can go on and off, store it, whatever you want to do. Another standard way of doing it with all anchors, you have to have a trip point in it. Okay, so you would tie your chain to the base. I'm going to call this the base of the anchor there for this, you know, for beginners. So that when you pull it up, if you can imagine, this would pull, if you pull from this direction, it pulls the flukes out of the seabed, the bottom of the mud. But also, that's no good if you just tie it there, because you, as I said before, you want it pulling in like shovel-wise. This particular one, as I say, is a sort of shovel scoop grade one. So here is a strange contraption. You can tie the end of your chain here, stand away, let me just take this off for you. The sort of stand away, just ignore this for the moment, this piece. The stand away would be having a chain like this and you want to put a trip in, what's called a trip here. So we use these for years, people still use them, loads of people use them. Good old, you can use a piece of string that will break, a piece of fishing line, or standard, it's sort of cable ties. So you would go through there, through this ring here, through a ring on your chain, and you would obviously zip it up like that, nice and tight, I'll do this one anyway. Right, so that's going along, you let out a load of slack, say, double the depth you're fishing in on a sort of average. Should be more, I think, but say double the depth. So you've got an angle on the rope, the line, to pull that anchor, drag it into the seabed, the bottom, the mud, or whatever like that. That way, this chain is helping tip that down. If you had rope which was buoyant, it's gonna do this, and it? It's gonna tip it up. So you want the weight of the chain to help pull those flukes in and lay it all down flat. So as the tide or the wind pushes the boat along, this all digs in the bottom and scoops in. Now, that's great till you want to get the anchor up and go home. And you think, ah, oh, that's gonna be really hard to leave her out the mud. Of course it is. That's where you have the cable tie. Now you might want one, two, three, it's entirely up to you. You can break it out using the boat or your hands. I used to do it loads by hand, pulling it up. But you've got to judge how many cable ties you want. You don't want to keep tripping in a heavy tide. So as you put the pressure on this way, I probably won't break this as a cable tie. What happens is, I'm just going to use this pair of pliers, cutters, just to give you illustrate it. As you pull up like this, it's leaving in the bottom. That will snap, okay? Then this will pull, look, if I can hold it. Let me put that camera up for you, people. This will then put the angle, look how it's tipping the angle up like this, so it pulls the anchor up out of the mud, and you hold it into the boat. Now, for two years, I would say at least, Oh, well, for longer than that, for 10 years I've been using cable ties, bits of twine, whatever I fancy. And then I've got this thing called an anchor trip, which you can see here. I've used this all the time, and thankfully, touch wood, I haven't lost my anchor yet. What it is, is like a very basic, just a stainless, I call that rod there. I don't know if it's 318 stainless or whatever they call it, it's obviously stainless. A little hook there, which, if I can get that closed, as you close that little notch in there. See, it? look, I can spring it, it's like a spring. Then you can slide this up or down. Now, down there, there is not much pressure. As you close it near the top, look, there, there's gonna to be a lot more pressure to pull this out when that clip 
it's rotated round, closed and locked in like that. So what happens is this, it's quite handy, I mean I haven't gone back, listen, since I've had this I haven't gone back to cable guys, that's all I'm saying. There's the end of the shaft of the anchor. All you do is pop this ring in there through the split like that, locate your, I do it with a pair of pliers, some people are strong enough, powerful men, they do it by hand, I do it with a pair of pinches like this, look. Pop that clip on, it's on, slide it up, I can see where the mark is about there, I'll do it loose like this to show you. You set it for whatever tension you want. And the same principle, as you pull this, watch, it pops off. How convenient is that? So dead easy to set, you're not putting any plastic in the seat. So all you do is squeeze it together, get it located over there, I tip it at a slight angle, slide it up to whatever tension you want. This is just the way I do it on my boat. Now, I've got it further up. I can't pull it out. I will pull that out of the boat. You see the principle of it. So that, I think it's just called an anchor trip. I'll show it to you there. You put it through a link in the chain here, make sure your chain is straight all the way up and allow for everything to be pulling straight. You see, although I slip it back, as you pull away, that little gap there opens up and bosh, up comes your anchor and away it goes. It's just a tip for small boat anglers, not warships, the QE2 monster sailing ships, what we call day boats, small size. That's what we do. Make sure your anchor's big enough for the size of boat you've got. You can look it up somewhere online. Now, talking of anchors, I really would cry big tears if I lost this one, this bruise, because it's a nice anchor. Occasionally, they will get hung on the bottom. You can't help it. What happens is this, normally, the tide will be running this way. Your boat anchors, there'd be a rock over here, a rock over there, whatever. You can generally rip them out, the rocks, by that trip. But what happens if you're in for, let's say, a seven hour session, that boat is gonna swing like this, gonna swing right around. Therefore, your anchor rope's doing this, your chain is doing this, so here's a nice big rock, your anchor's up there, as the boat swings, it turns, and the chain goes around the rock. Then you're going to say good night Vienna to anchor, chain, probably rope. If you don't snap the rope by pulling it, you're going to have to cut it. So the only way I do is I try to remember where my boat is anchored and when I move on the tide, am I going clockwise or anti-clockwise? If the boat turns, let's say this way, it's, it's, you know, it's going to go well, as I'm standing, anti-clockwise. When I steam that anchor out, I make sure I go around in an arc like this way. Oh, don't bite me. Make sure the boat goes back the way so you swap. If it is around a big rock or snag, you're unwinding that chain you can pull up directly. Just a tip. Now, if you're on very rough ground, I don't drop this down at all. I drop down what's called a grapnel anchor. So you cut your stud to whatever size you want. I'm going to say 15 inches for I'm going to say for boat my size, maybe 18 inches. Then you've got your four holes there. You just thread the stud through like this. Already run up your uh, your washer. You don't, <clears throat> you don't have to have the washer. Give me a second to spin this up. I'm going to spin my nuts up. I'm going to spin my nut here to meet the other nut. Like this. So you would get those on there like that. Equidistant, which I'm not, but it doesn't really matter. Nip them up with a pair of crocodile grips or pliers, whatever. Put it in, say, a vice, or if you don't have a vice in a big garage, all you gotta do is get another piece of scaffold tube, either yourself, put, a, put your foot on it, and use the long piece, the long piece of scaffold tube here, if somebody can hold this, and then bend it round to about just a slight curve. You don't need it right round here. Just a slight curve, okay? Just a slight bend in like that. Turn it round, do the same. I haven't got it, I'm not gonna cut one out specially. That way. So there is your disposable anchor should you get snagged, but also it will hold better in a rocky situation, rough ground situation. Piece of scaffold tube, and at this end, obviously, you can put through one of these, again, a little short length, maybe like this, nip it off there, just the space of the nut there, space of the nut there, tighten them up first, then hacksaw it off, but before you do that on there, you can put a shackle, because it's re recessed in there, you see, 
put your chain onto there. You may even find that this will, and it probably would through my chain, go straight through the link of the chain. So you put the link of the chain, dangle it in there, go through here, first hole, second link of the chain, go through here, through the link of the chain in there, out here, bolt on, bolt on, tighten, hacksaw off. There's your link for your chain. So there you go, there's a couple of tips on anchoring. And of course, at the end of the day, sometimes, even during the winter, it gets pretty cold out there. Now my poor old hands, they do suffer with the cold. I don't like the cold at all, but I don't know if they still make them. I've still got a load left of these hand warmer things. I'll show you what they are, because somebody out there might not know about them. Okay, so what I'm talking about are these things. We had these years and years ago. I can't tell you how old this one is. Got rust and everything with it. I still use it, it still works. There's like a fibrous material there. You can close it up. And what do you put inside it? A solid fuel stick. That's right. It involves lighters and flames. It's got to be worth doing, isn't it? And they burn hot. So it's like a sort of stick. I don't know what it is. I'm going to say it's charcoal y, barbecue y type of stuff like this. And then obviously it involves flames. These are very, very handy out in uh, cold weather. Now I find this one, this one might take a while to do because you know, I've had this one out in the garage. I've been using others when I'm using them all in the winter. I keep them inside and I put them on the radiator to warm them up and dry out. So this one will eventually, with the lighter on, start to glow, we'll be able to show you. Don't burn your fingers with these. Adults only, all that, all that stuff, all that health and safety. Be careful with the cigarette lighter. Right, it might not look like it's going, but it is. Right, I'm going to blow this, bring the camera over. Hopefully guys, you can see that. Excuse me while I fall over and hyperventilate. Now, you put that inside this little unit, you think it's going to go out. It doesn't. It burns for absolutely ages. Now, that's, it's going to take five minutes to get warm there. So, for some bizarre reason, it doesn't need oxygen to burn. I don't know how it works. They're hand warm. It's getting warm already. The case is now getting warm. So this is really good when it's really, really cold. You can have two. Now, if you have loose gloves, you can slide one inside, one inside, you know? A bit fiddly when you're playing a fish show, but you know what I'm saying, where I'm coming from is you can put them inside your gloves, or you can put them in your pocket, jacket pocket, anywhere, and then just put your hand in there if it gets really cold to warm it up. This is getting, this is getting really warm now. Oh my God, it's heaven. There you go, that's a tip. And that, it doesn't smoke or anything. Don't touch it when it's hot. I've got the cold end, obviously. It's just burning away there, and that is a hand warmer. Just a little tip for you. Another little tip for you, everybody gets weird stuff for Christmas and birthdays. Well, I've had these things. They're most strange, but I've used them once or twice. They're quite good when you're margin fishing and you just want enough light to sew, to, you know, to basically just put a bait on here and you don't want a big, huge light flashing all over the ocean or indeed river or lake. It's these things. Tiny little swivel lights that run on a sort of, I'm going to call it a watch battery, but they've got a clip with them. So you can move them around. You could put them, if you wanted, on your glasses, or wait for this. Get them around at the right angle, like that, and you can put the clip like this, just on the edge of your hat. Okay, like this. Little buttons on the top, you press those. On comes the light. I can just see these two. Hopefully you can see it. There you go. Yeah, I can see that. I know that one's bright enough. They're both bright enough. And they're little watch factory ones. So that's something different because it just gives you like enough to just do this, just to bait up. Just gonna put a bait on there, that's all I need. Yeah, it's fine. Click, click, and they're off. Another tip. I can't imagine how many people are gonna be searching for these. Just another one of those presents that you think, I'll never use that. And you don't for a while until 
you find a useful one, and then you think, oh, actually, that is quite handy. You're not going to flood like half the beach up with it. It's just really freshwater fishing almost. Just doing bait, something like that, and then you can press a button and just switch them off. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I try to bring you as much information and a little bit of fishing as well. I do the best I can. Support us, TA Outdoors, as well, Mike's channel. And if you want to support the clothing, support the clothing. If you don't, you don't. It's just we're still going to make the films if we can. So we'll see you next time. I don't know where it'll be, but there's going to be water involved there somewhere.